Alright, welcome back to not assignment 2.6, but lesson 2.6. Today we're going to figure out the rest of the derivatives of the primary and reciprocal trig functions. As a quick review, do you remember if I gave you y equals sine x, what was its derivative? That's right, cosine x. And if I gave you cosine x, what was its derivative? negative sine x. Bravo! So today we're going to combine this along with what you learned the last class along with the lovely trig identity that you all have memorized by now sine squared x plus cosine squared there should be an x there equals to you guessed it 1 and then also using the idea that tangent as a quotient is just sine over cosine and also secant as a reciprocal is 1 over cosine. Now we're set to actually find these derivatives. So, ddx of tangent x, or the derivative of tangent x. Well, you just told me that tangent is the, sine, is the same as sine over cosine. So, really, I'm asking you to take the derivative of sine x over cosine x. And this is a quotient, so... The quotient rule I need to know. Did you think we would stop singing this? Haha. <laughs> so the quotient rule I need to know. Low d high. Okay, what's the derivative sign? D high, that's right, cosine x. Low d high less high. D low, what's d of low? Ooh, that's negative sine x. Draw a line and then below. Oh, put the square of the low. There you go. Let's simplify. Cosine x times cosine x, that's cosine squared x. Negative sine x times negative sine x is positive sine squared x. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses. What is that? If you thought cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals to 1 because of the trig identity, you're right. And cosine x all squared is just 1 over cosine squared x. And 1 over cosine is the same thing as? Mm-hmm. Secant x, so this must be secant squared x. Bravo! So, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x. Yay! Now, how about the derivative of secant x? Hmm. Secant x, that's the same thing as 1 over cosine of x. Ah, quotient rule again. The quotient rule I need to know. Low d high, what's the derivative of 1? Ha <laughs> zero. Low d high less high d low. What's the derivative of cosine x? Negative sine x. Draw a line and then below. Oh, put the square of the low. There we go again. This simplifies, of course, to sine x in the numerator. Cosine squared x in the denominator. And for this one, I'm going to ask you to split this up. I'm going to ask you to split this up into 1 over cosine x multiplied by sine x over cosine x. Why would I do that? Because sine x over cosine x is the same thing as tangent x. And 1 over cosine is, yeah, it's secant x. So the derivative of secant x is secant x tangent x. Now, that was two of them. And if you were to think... Ah, uh, there's two more we haven't done. You are correct. We haven't done cotangent, but remember, cotangent can be written as cosine x over sine x, and then you would do it the same way as tangent. Cosecant x is the same thing as 1 over sine x, so that would be very similar to the secant one. And I'm going to leave those as exercises for you to do, because I know you can do it. And when you're done, well... Check the box below, because this is what you need to know. Here are all the derivatives of the six trig functions that we commonly use. The derivative of sine, of course, is cosine. We did that before. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. We did that before. And now, today you learned this one. The derivative of tangent is secant squared x. And then you should have proven yourself that the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared secant then becomes secant x tangent x and cosecant x becomes negative cosecant x cotangent x now notice 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 all the ones that start with c have derivatives that are negative okay 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 so 
keep that in mind okay the C's are all negatives so from now on these formulas can be used making it unnecessary to use the quotient rule process for these simple functions so yeah don't use the quotient rule every single time just use these now okay and like I said to you, hey, common errors involve signs. Can you see a quick way to remember them? I just told you. So if you're told, if you're listening, you should write this down. You should know. If you didn't, <laughs> rewind the video and figure out what I just said. All right. Things in the box. Yeah, you know what I say. Memorize. Okay. So now let's just do a few quick examples here. Can you please differentiate the following without the calculator? So we have 4 cotangent x. Well, that 4 is a constant. We'll just ignore it. And then the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared x. And we can just write this as negative 4 cosecant squared x. That's it. Ah, number 2. e to the x times tangent x. Did you hear me say that? e to the x times tangent x. A, B. A prime, which is just e to the x, b plus b prime. Okay, what's the derivative of tangent x now? Secant squared x. Good. A. And then, like I said before, if you want to factor out the e to the x, you can. You don't necessarily need to, but a. I already started it. Let me finish it. Done. All right, so I see quotient rule, the quotient rule I need to know. Low d high. Ooh, what's the derivative of cosecant t? That's negative cosecant t cotangent t. Remember, you have to have these memorized. Low d high less high d low. And the derivative of t squared is 2t. Draw a line and then below put the square of the low. So t squared squared is just t to the power of 4. And I'm not even going to simplify this one. You can if you want, but I'm not going to. Okay. Alright, number 4. Ooh, product rule again. I'll let you try this one yourself, please. And then you sing the song. I want to hear you sing. I know I can't really hear you sing, but humor me. Sing. Mm -hmm. A prime B plus B prime A. And once again, I'm not going to simplify this. We're done. Okay. All right, and then uh, I could give you some applications. There's a standard one, find the slope of the graph. We know that finding the slope of a graph means just to find the derivative, and then we just plug in the point. So the derivative of negative 3 tangent x is just negative 3 secant squared x. In this case, we have to plug in uh, secant squared of pi over 4, which is really secant pi over 4 all squared. So this might be a little bit tricky for you, but remember pi over 4 is 45 degrees. So you get a nice 1, 1, root 2 triangle. Secant is the same thing as 1 over cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So remember cosine pi over 4 is just 1 over root 2. Therefore secant pi over 4 must be just root 2. And this is beautiful because root 2 all squared is just 2. I'm going to multiply that by negative 3. Woo, the slope is negative 6. Okay. Similarly, we'll do the same thing for part B. Uh, I think you can do this really quickly. The hard part about this one is just evaluating this negative angle. Hmm. And if I'm thinking negative pi over 3, that would be in quadrant. Yeah. Four. And I didn't draw this diagram very well. Pi over 3 is like 60 degrees, so it should be more like this. I can draw my lovely triangle. Boop, boop, boop. 1, 2, I guess this is negative root 3. Cosine, once again, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, cosine negative pi over 3. Ah! Be equal to adjacent, which is 1 over hypotenuse, 
secant negative pi over 3 then would be the reciprocal, which is 2. So negative 3 times 2 squared, that's 4 times 3. Bravo. If you got negative 12, give yourself a pat on the back. And then now do the questions in assignment 2.6. And voila. Yes, I speak French. Je parle français. Uh, we are done. Unit 2.